Welcome to the Stunt Hanger Live program. Uh, on this program, we're going to call Howard Rush. Let's see if we can get a hold of him. And I'll be posting a link here that you can join the uh, conversation. And uh, if you'd like to join in, all you have to have is the uh, the Google uh, the Google app called Hangout. Okay, so let's give Howard a call. Four, two. Uh, okay. Hello. Hello, Howard. Yes. Yeah, welcome live to the Stunt Hanger program. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing all right. Great. Hello, everybody out there and on the Internet. Uh, this is Howard Rush talking to you. And uh, we're waiting for Sparky to find the pictures. All right. Yeah. You can do better <laughs> when there's a picture to talk about. Well, um, I'll... I'll have the pictures. You just go ahead and uh, go ahead and tell us about what you got, and we'll see what. Uh, I mean, I'll put it together. And that's not a problem. You'll, you'll put it together, okay? The pictures aren't here yet, but I'll talk about pictures that Sparky cannot see. <laughs> so, um, I hope you get together with this uh, talk. Well, let's start with uh, David Fitzgerald at the 2008 World Champs, picture number one. Um, on his airplane, picture number two, uh, he had a cartoon of the Statue of Liberty. And I thought this was really cool. Uh, it uh, related the U.S. and France where the World Championships was because the Statue of Liberty was a gift from the French to the United States. So I wanted to do something like that uh, Claim the world championships in Poland, where I uh, on the stunt team, and uh, so I came upon picture three. This guy, Tadeusz Kosciuszko, who was a Pole who came to fight in the U.S. Revolution and was uh, became a general. Was kind of the brains behind the U.S. Revolution, especially in the North. And uh, went back home and became a national hero in Poland. So I, they'd all recognize him, I figured. I'd put his picture on my left wing, which doubles as a joke for about a tenth of a percent of you who uh, are familiar with uh, automatic controls and dynamics and stuff. Uh, Is that the same setup that Igor runs? Our... I, <laughs> I was talking about uh, Tadeusz Kosciuszko, this uh, this Revolutionary War general. Right. When you said uh, Igor doesn't run him, no. No dynamic controls. I maybe I'm missing something. Oh, that's uh, yeah. It's an inside joke with like Frank Williams and Brett and a couple other guys. Right. So never mind. Moving along. Um, well, I couldn't figure out how to get this guy's picture on the wing. I found something better. Um, and picture number four. Um, in 1919, Poland got into a dust-up with the Soviet Union. Um, they were fighting over some land. And uh, there was an American in Poland at the time Marion Cooper, who was a captain in the Army, who was working on some food aid program. And he'd flown in the First World War, so he decided to uh, enlist in the Polish Air Force and got a bunch of Americans to join him, and they formed this, they and Poles formed the Kosciuszko Squadron. And uh, picture four here shows the insignia of the Kosciuszko Squadron. It's the Betsy Ross flag with uh, uh, a hat and crossed scythes of uh, Polish farmers that Kosciuszko led in battle against the Russians uh, 
like in the early 19th century. Um, the guy who actually designed the emblem was Neil Chess, an American who was part of the squadron. And I thought it would be a really cool story if he was related to the Chess brothers who recorded the blues records in Chicago. Well, he's not. But it turns out the Chess brothers are from Poland, which kind of ties it together. Um, I got them downloading right now. They're, uh, I should be able to open them here in a second. Okay. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> go ahead and... Uh, picture number. Pardon me? We're up to picture number five. Okay, well, I haven't got them open yet. They're... Okay, I don't well, know. I'll, I'll or, talk about it. And you can, yeah. Uh, you can show them when the time comes. Right. Uh. Um, picture number five, the Kosciuszko Squadron um, ended up in England. They left Poland when the uh, Germans took over. Ended up in England and reformed as the 303rd RAF squadron flying um, hurricanes in the Battle of Britain. They were the the uh, top scoring squadron in the Battle of Britain um, and later kind of forgotten in a sad story. The uh, This emblem though uh, lives on in picture six um, is a poster we saw in the street in downtown Warsaw, this Robert Gretzinger, whose name I'm probably mispronouncing, is painting a huge uh, Kosciuszko squadron insignia on top of a MiG-29. And uh, this guy is a sort of a preserver of Polish uh, aviation history and an artist. And uh, I got some pictures and some other material from him. I might... Uh, because he had his website uh, at the bottom of the poster. I might uh, put a link to it uh, on Stunt Hanger for those who are interested in Polish aviation history and the Kosciuszko Squadron and that sort of thing. Well, that's the story of the insignia on the side of my airplane. <laughs> <laughs> onward, onward to uh, picture number seven. Um, We, this is the uh, the U.S. stunt team. This is uh, at the 2013 team trials. And um, I had kind of an interesting trip to the team trials. I started by going over the Walker Stunt Ranch and turning my airplane and him teaching me how to fly it. And, and there was a contest down in Davis, California. I moseyed down to that. And... and uh, Went from there to Muncie. It was a cool trip. That team was um, you, Arrestus, and Kenny Stevens, correct? That's right. Yeah, I got the and, pictures up now. Okay, yeah. Picture. Which picture is it? Seven. Seven. We're uh, we're all electric. Um, the dog I'm flying there is an impact with the the tail's actually an inch shorter than it's supposed to be, or half an inch shorter. The nose is quite a bit shorter than it ought to be, and Sparky makes fun of it because it has ballast in it. I, uh, I, I figured the CG so it would come out with a heavier battery than I used, and to come out the same place as it would with an IC airplane. Well, I used a lighter battery, and the CG had to be an inch farther forward, so I've got a bunch of ballast in the nose, and Sparky laughs at me every time he sees it. <laughs> Yeah, and, I do. Uh, onward to uh, onward to picture eight. We had a <laughs> an interesting trip to Poland. Uh, didn't have any trouble with the batteries carrying them on. It's carry on. Didn't have any trouble with the airplane. Actually, I had it in a Kevlar line box, and it got there safely. And we. Uh, on the on the way to meet up with uh, Kenny and Deborah Stevens at O'Hare Airport in Chicago, we ran across Dennis Moritz, which was kind of 
uh, surrealistic, him uh, being out of place and all. In uh, Poland or in Chicago? In Chicago. Uh-huh. No, it didn't, it, we saw evidence of Dennis in, Mar- in, uh, in Poland, and we saw evidence of uh, the sort of thing he would... Uh, he would like in Poland, which uh, uh, I might talk about later if we, <laughs> if we don't run out of time. So here we are, uh, picture number eight, the arrival uh, in Poland. You can see people with their cameras and stuff. This is the big deal in Poland because this is the first uh, time the Jive Combat Team has been to a world championships in Poland since uh, 1980 when <laughs> Philip took uh, third in combat. Yeah, and they were all there to welcome the Jive Combat Team. Oh yeah, it's, it was it was a big deal. It was in all the newspapers. I guess I couldn't read Polish. <laughs> uh, and uh, we got there and uh, got our rental car, which was a Renault Renault uh, Scenic. It was a pretty cool car. It had lots of gadgets. It had uh, a cruise control. We couldn't figure out how to operate. But when we did, it was just a really good cruise control, best I've seen. And it had uh, manual transmission, though. And uh, all the way to the contest, uh, Kenny was giving me shifting instructions. It was most enjoyable trip. And uh, now let's, let's see. see. On, onward to picture number nine. When, after arriving at something like this, the first thing you do is go out and get the supplies you can't bring along with, uh, with you. Um, Poland has uh, lots of big box stores with everything you need. Uh, this is a Home Depot type store which had sandpaper on rolls. We were impressed by this. Did you bring any home? No. I didn't bring any sandpaper home, I don't think. I would like to have a roll of that by the looks of it. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I can tell you where to go. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, picture number 10, uh, they even have nitro. It's <laughs> Well, it says nitro, but uh, it's not really nitro. It's mm-hmm. some solvent, uh, which I... I was able to employ to clean tar off my lines that I got from uh, <laughs> the only pavement we saw was this little strip on the corner of the team race practice circle and uh, we made an informal practice circle and took off from that but it was all tarry tar was oozing out of the pavement and getting on people's lines um, onward to uh, Picture 11. People told me, now be careful not to wear anything that identifies you as an American. (laughs) And um, I found out that you would be the only person in Poland not identifying himself as an American. Here's uh, the real department store, the t-shirt section, and I don't know that you can read the labels on all these t-shirts, but they're all... I They're see. all in English, and they they all have U.S. place names on them. Most of them are in New York for some reason, Brooklyn, and the like. But uh, Harlem, one of them. Um, so if, if you if you wear something identifying yourself as American, people come up to you and talk Polish to you because they figure you're Polish. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Kids wear an American flag. T-shirts and stuff. Um, I've been to a couple of these world championships before as a stunt pit crew or assistant team manager. And one of the features of going to a stunt world championships is looking around for a place to practice. And so we drove around the countryside. It was kind of fun looking for a place to practice. Didn't come up with anything, but we came across this restaurant that's a cute Picture restaurant, 12. yeah. And uh, that was a pretty cool place. Uh, let's see. Picture 13, there's Kenny and Deborah, his wife, at the restaurant, having a good time. Picture 14 is the is the resident mm-hmm. cat at the restaurant. We, 
Poland is a meat and taters place, and they, they have a lot of good food, good, really good weenies and good potatoes. Uh, I recommend it as a place to eat. Now, it looks like you got uh, your gnats impact here on this next picture. Next picture, 15. Um, oh, I forgot I forgot to, uh, to uh, give thanks to people. Uh, to allowing allowing me to make the team, uh, in particular uh, Paul Walker, Dave Fitzgerald, Brett Buck, Ted Fancher, Bob Hunt, Bill Werwich, Derek Berry, Doug Moon, Bill Rich, Randy Smith, Wendy Erdnowski, and probably a bunch of others for not going to the team trials <laughs> 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 and, and letting me letting me uh, make the team. Okay, well. Onward to uh, the dog I'm flying at the team trails. Yeah, I flew it at uh, last year's Nats, and uh, yeah. it's pretty good. Pretty good stunt plane. It's heavy though. What I'm looking at though uh, is, did you take two airplanes with you? No, the 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 white one is the one I flew at the team trails. Right, and the yellow one is the I one you took overseas. Yeah, I couldn't I couldn't take the white one because it doesn't come apart and fit in a shoebox. Okay. So I had to make one that comes apart and fits in a shoebox. Well, it doesn't have and, that uh, funny short nose either, so that's a good thing. It, it's a little longer. It's uh, It could be a little longer yet, but that might get me into the need for a rabies rudder. Um, this, uh, this airplane, the, each wing comes off separately. It's uh, uh, Mike Haverly's take-apart system. The fuselage is one piece. Well, the tail comes off, so it's not quite one piece. Um, the fuselage should really come apart, too, to take advantage of the, uh, the 62-inch total dimension, height, width, and length for the box you're allowed to check on airplanes these days. Um, how much, ha I, how I much hassle to, was the, the security getting all that gear over there? Um, the batteries, it was none. Uh, the airplane, I put a, I, what I was afraid of was they'd, they'd unpack it and then try to stuff it back in and wreck it. Um, and I put a, a photo essay on the box of how to unpack it and repack it, which they ignored. But going over there, um, Paul Walker gave me kind of instructions on what to do, and I went down to the uh, to the security place with the box, and uh, the TSA guy just opened the box and took a swab and wiped it to see if there was any explosives on it, and uh, didn't unpack it. I passed the test, and it went on its way. Uh, coming back. The TSA guy in Chicago uh, unpacked the box and wouldn't let me touch it to repack it and didn't quite follow my instructions on uh, putting it back together. And it had a little damage, but not, not too bad. So, On, on second you, thought uh, on your next trip, would would it be better to UPS it over there? Oh, I kind of doubt it. I don't know how. I don't know. I haven't looked into that. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted it to, to be with me. <laughs> I guess I could have UPSed one ahead of time, but then you're without the thing when you want to fly it. And the practice is, uh, there's not enough time to practice anyhow. Right. Get there. Or not a, no place to practice. So, uh, I don't know. That's an idea. Um, this airplane, uh, is a, it's an impact with the same rib set that Paul's using now on his climbing dog hit airplanes. Um, it has a one inch longer fuselage, wider fuselage. Uh, no balance tabs on the flaps. I've been putting balance tabs on my flaps. This has the Igor nonlinear flap system, which uh, doesn't require balance tabs. It does the same has the same effect without without the balance tabs. So uh, it says a bigger tail. Uh, there's a FAI rule about spinner nose radius. So I had a 
spinner 3D printed to meet the nose radius criteria. I kind of like the blunt nose anyhow. Um, and it has 3D printed vortex generators. Uh, the propeller is a three blade that goes uh, the way propellers are supposed to go, positive rotation around the x-axis. Um, counterclockwise looking from the front. I, I started out with one going clockwise looking from the front, which I'd used before, and it did this Lomchevac on top of the mm-hmm. hourglass, and it did perverted stuff on the, on the left end of the square eight. So switching uh, prop directions uh, made it fly a lot better. Um, the, the propellers are made by Chris Cox and uh, Alan Resinger. Vancouver. Um, I got Igor's auto throttle system in here. Um, plus, um, the Tim Westcott's Tut timer, Tim's Universal Timer, and uh, the Tut has the uh, additional modes for takeoff, so you can do a slow takeoff, and uh, then just before the motor cuts, it gives a burst of power, so you can get in your one lap descent uh, easier that FAI requires it. So it kind of works like an internal combustion engine airplane. They have a burst of speed at the end. Um, and uh, the TUT also uh, works some enunciation logic for the LEDs on the side. So, Which I, I want to thank you for sending me those. Those, those are really cool. I haven't put them in. I haven't put them in uh, my air. I have one uh, airplane left that I'm going to use them in. But as yeah, there's it, no nose weight. If you uh, if you if you need some nose weight, you know some of these airplanes need it. Right. In about yeah. uh, in about three minutes, we're going to have to take a break, and I'm going to have to restart the camera because it's a 29 and 29 second. Uh, a 29 minutes, 29 second thing on all DSLRs. So we've been okay. we've been talking about 26 minutes now. So in a couple of minutes, okay. I'll take a break and then restart the camera. Yeah. The other interesting feature about this airplane is uh, the landing gear. I made some extreme carbon landing gear. They stick way out forward. Uh, we got some advance word from. Uh, I, I talked to. A guy on the Canadian uh, helicopter team who'd been there for the helicopter world championships the previous year who told me about the field conditions. So I was I had took along three sets of landing gear, so I was prepared for any field condition. Going to picture sixteen. Um, this is uh, Istvan Travnik. I don't. I'm not pronouncing any of these names right. I'm sorry. I I can write them, but uh, sure. I, I never thought I'd need to pronounce them, and so here we are. Uh, he was a likable guy because he looked like Bill Wretch, so yeah, he he's did. naturally likable. Not as heavy, though. And I, I tried to express that to him, uh, and I couldn't communicate that very well. <laughs> <laughs> Should have just went round. <laughs> round. He's uh, hungry. He's from hung- this. this this model is built from blue foam. Oh, I saw that. And yeah, he, he described it in the stunt hangar. Right. Um, and uh, looking at picture seventeen, where it broke, you can see it's all blue foam. Right. And uh, we uh, lent him some uh, glass and epoxy from leftover from Kenny's repair. To it, is that repair airplane from. covered with balsa wood? It doesn't look like it. I don't know. I don't think so. Did it have a real nice finish on it? It looks smooth. Uh, not, not, uh, not by West Coast standards. Okay. <laughs> I understand. <clears throat> he had an expo crank system in there, which uh, you could see in the canopy. It sticks up in the canopy. That was pretty cool. Uh, number eighteen was. Yurker Wino, whose name I'm no, I'm not pronouncing correctly. He's from Sweden. 
he flew a Gordon Delaney Pathfinder, so I took his picture to, to show to Gordon. And he also has um, a 55 Chevy, which Gordon has. And he has a bunch of uh, American cars, he, a bunch of cars he shows in car shows. And, uh, picture number 19 is one of his cars. Well, that's cool. Yeah, he has. About, I, I can send you send you the the pictures he sent me. A bunch of cool stuff. And uh, I didn't uh, mention to him that the time he was driving this, I was driving a '74 Saab. <laughs> um, other folks, uh, picture number twenty is Per Vosboden, the lone Norwegian. He he was flying both stunt and combat. The only Norwegian participating in those events, I think. I couldn't. Uh, I looked online to find the results of the world champs, and I can't find them anywhere. They've evaporated. So, um, picture twenty-one is the undersigned with Tanya Uzunova from Bulgaria. She was the Slovakian team manager. This this sort of crossover between countries was happening all over the place. So, <laughs> it looks it looks like it was a pretty nice sight, except for the the terrain. It looks like it probably could have been pretty rough. Yeah, the terrain was was rough. They they really were they they didn't have it prepared in advance of the contest, uh, but they really worked on it. I mean, maybe they didn't have access to it. I don't know what the deal is, but they they'd come in at night with fire trucks from town and spray it with water and roll it and. Mow it, yeah. but they they only uh, they only did the two uh, official circles and one practice circle. And there were a lot of people wanting to practice, so it was uh, it's kind of hard to find a place to practice. But yeah, they 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 put a lot of work in it once they got started. We should have bought a lawnmower and got our own circle. Uh, they didn't even have a lawnmower. Uh, well, I didn't ask them. Uh, we could have borrowed one or bought one or something. Probably should have done that. But we had a good time looking around other places for practice circles. It looks like you had stadium. looks like you had a paved circle here in the next picture. The next picture, go to picture twenty-two. That is not a whole circle. It's just a, a corner of. A, they, they had a team race practice circle on a square chunk of asphalt. And the circle being round and the square being square, there was a little corner left over where we could take off and land and fly over the weeds. And this was a, a second unofficial practice circle. And uh, Restes was flying there a lot. And Igor, I was kind of reluctant to fly there because I'd have to take off downwind and I didn't want to buzz a prop, although I probably wouldn't have buzzed it with extreme landing gear. I, uh, that's where I got the tar on the lines. Um, this is uh, Yuri Yatsenko, the designer of the shark. And this is the only political thing I saw at the contest is these Ukrainian t-shirts for Ukraine all together. Uh, but what I thought it needed improvement about this uniform was his hat. And so he, I've seen him before in an Antonov hat. He works at Antonov or worked there. So if you look in picture 23, you see we gave him a better hat, a 777 hat. Uh -huh. And he wore it all week. Wore it in the opening ceremony. <laughs> wore it when he flew stunt. That's pretty cool. <clears throat> On to picture 24. Um, the Chinese and Japanese teams just kind of spontaneously started falling in line to have a picture taken of the two of them together. So there's the Chinese and Japanese stunt teams together. Well, I guess and, their language and, is close. <laughs> um. The, on the right is uh, the interpreter for the Chinese team, um, and I I gave her an American flag pin, and 
just as a joke, I left it in its wrapper that said "Made in China." And <laughs> she thought that was pretty funny. Yeah, well, everything in the U.S. is made in China. Yeah, country can't even make its own model airplane. Well, I got one better than but, that. Listen to this: My dad went to the World War II Memorial last weekend, Washington D.C. They presented him with a medal, and when he was going back through the airport security, he opened the box because the airport security wanted to look at this metal and the the top of the uh, pin was off or whatever and he looked at it it's made in china his world yeah. war ii metal is made in china yeah he was not happy well they were on our side yeah i guess <laughs> yeah uh now picture number 25 is the opening ceremony and all the teams marched by it was kind of uh, tedious <laughs> it took a while <laughs> but it was it was fun and this is the New Zealand team and if you look carefully there you will see the manager of the 2008 US team Richard Lopez and his wife in New Zealand uniforms um, he uh, he was a pit crew for the New Zealand combat team that's just another one of these crossovers that happen here. Looked like the um, the Brazilian team had a, a good showing of nice ladies. Uh, the Brazilian team was there. Uh, um, actually, uh, I came across, the next team was from Portugal, and there was a Brazilian there that I knew, uh, Mauricio Serafim, yeah, right. uh, combat player. He was he was pitting for the Portuguese, so I... I said, Mauricio, I don't didn't see you on the Brazilian team roster. You no, know, he, he was Portuguese this week. Um, number uh, t picture number twenty six is the Lithuanian team. And I thought that they were that that was one of my favorite teams to watch go by. Um, I guess. <laughs> yeah, uh, and here's uh, picture number twenty seven is the U USA. I think that's Richard Lopez's flag <laughs> in the foreground that he went to the U.S. team because he's New Zealand team for the occasion. Um, picture 28 is the U.S. speed team. Uh, they were the most successful of the U.S. teams there. Bill Hughes, Carl Dodge, and Alexander Valashev. Carl, in the middle, um, won. One uh, F2A with his final flight. Yeah, he's he's real good. All three of those guys, when they come to Booter, they're they're really fast. This oh yeah, Ale Alexander, what is his name? Vanchinko or whatever. And yeah, Valashev, yeah, which I don't know how to pronounce. Yeah, either. I don't either. And and uh, the other one on the left, they're Bill always Hughes. yeah, Bill Hughes. They're always at the top of the game, you know. Yeah, they they live in Northern Illinois. Uh, Carl won the 1990 uh, World Championships, too, uh, in France. I was there. He went to the same school I did, and he's even older than I. He, uh, he was gone by the time I got there. People talked about him. Um, number 29 is, uh, picture number 29 is the two-thirds of the U.S. combat team. Um, one of the guys, Josh Ellison, got bit by a spider in Texas, where he lived, just before he was going to leave for the world championships. And the bite got infected, and he was hospitalized and couldn't go. So uh, Chuck Rudner, on the right, was along to pit for his boy, Mark, guy in the center because uh, uh, Mark's usual pit crew was flying for <laughs> some European team. He's a European. And, uh, and Chuck had oh, been a, one of the top placers in the U.S. team trials. and So he just took Josh's spot on the team, so we had father and son on the team. And in fact, Josh sent his airplanes along so Chuck could fly on those. 
pretty magnanimous of him. Um, I've known these guys forever, Chuck and and Mark. Mark lives in Denmark now, but uh, came back home to fly in the U.S. team trial. I guess the next picture is a future flyer? Uh, no. Picture number 30 is Sasha Nadine, um, our junior um, junior member of the combat team. Now, this picture was taken in 2000 at the 2000 World Championships, in fact. And it's the cutest baby I've ever seen. She is the cutest baby I've ever seen. And everybody else thought so, too. Well, go to picture 31, and here she is, the junior member of the U.S. combat team with her dad, uh, Andre. Yeah, very good. And, of course, here's and, uh, Igor. Onward to Igor, picture number 32. Um, he, they, There was a warm-up contest, well, a World Cup contest, which we thought of as a warm-up contest. Uh, before the world championships and uh, Kenny and I entered Kenny wasn't able to fly because he was between airplanes at the time um, there was some ill wind blowing when Igor flew and although he still won but he decided he'd better practice uh, with the wind blowing in all directions just in case it happened during one of his world champs flights and so we watched him fly maneuvers on all parts of the circle. <laughs> and in particular, he did his square eights dead upwind, and they were good. <laughs> so I was I was mightily impressed. If you look at picture thirty-three, um, you young stunt players out there, that um, people tell you to hold your handle upright while you're flying inverted well here's what the champion of the world does and if, if you look at uh, at the the number one guy on the US team Orestes Hernandez he flies with his handle sideways but with the palm up now yeah. so <laughs> put that in your pipe and smoke it it's all whatever okay. you're comfortable with yeah I I don't know what I do when I'm flying upside down I'm afraid to look because I don't want to think about it. Um, picture 34 is Yuri wearing his fine uh, 777 hat and flying a shark. Um, sharks were, you know, if they do away with appearance points, they'll still be pretty airplanes at the contest because these Yatsenko airplanes are very well finished and pretty. So as long as people are willing to pay the $4,000 or so. I mean, yeah, but they're computer uh, designed. Well, so are, so are a lot of airplanes <laughs> with people involved. Was it, isn't Yuri um, an aircraft engineer or something? Yep. <laughs> That's what I figured. Yeah, he works for Antonov, or did. Um, picture number 35. Here's uh, Rusty's getting ready. He's not about to flip his engine. He's just signaling to the judges, who are signaling back, and... Uh, this is where we had a, sort of a home field advantage because we, you see it at the far end of the circle, Mark Overmeyer's yellow jacket. Oh, yeah. And this is, the, at our, our Nats, this is our signal to start the wing over. And so uh, we had this familiar wing over starting, <laughs> <laughs> right. starting point. Uh, yeah. I, uh, I was, fly, I was flying before the other panel of judges on my first flight, and I had a little wing over trouble. So <laughs> I, I started my, I saw the judges start, did my wing over, came over upside down, and saw the Russian judge, who it turned out was like thirty feet away from the other judges. And so as soon as I see him, I saw him. I went up in the wing over in the other direction, and realized, oh no. <laughs> Wrong. I'm 30 feet off where I was going over the first time. So that was my my first world championship maneuver was made that mistake. Uh, in, the, in my second flight, I, uh, I did another 
thing that an experienced flyer wouldn't do. It was windy, and I didn't go up high enough on my triangle. and messed up the bottom of it. Triangles are expensive in FAI, so that, that set me back. So that's what you get when you send the junior varsity over to do the varsity job. Yeah. Um, picture number 36 is Kenny flying... Um, Blue Max, Kaz Minato's airplane. Kaz, Kaz's Blue Max. This is, yeah, Kenny, uh, he crashed. It's kind of a long story, which you've heard before. Oh, yeah. And uh, everybody was offering him airplanes to fly. It was it was really, really wonderful. It, I, uh, Benny Rodriguez had just taken a delivery of a new airplane from Yatsangos. He was going to let Kenny fly it. Uh, the uh, Dutch guys brought an airplane for him to fly from Holland. They got word about the crash and they hadn't left yet, so they threw another airplane in the car where they probably displaced some stuff to make room for it. And uh, a Slovakian was going to let him fly his airplane. And Kenny, Kenny knew Kaz and felt better about flying his airplane. Here's a question for you, because I've always thought about it. Um, you know, what happens if? Uh, I don't fly other people's airplanes, and but I do let other people fly mine. And if they happen to hit the ground, oh, well, I'll build another one. But what do you do when you borrowed somebody's airplane and you happen to hit the ground, especially like a Yatsenko? Are you out the four grand or what? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um. I mean... If you if you were to allow me to fly your airplane, I would fly it, but be so careful with it, and the maneuvers would be so high, it would be you know unrecognizable, really. But yeah, you let me fly yours once, and the handle wasn't exactly right, so I didn't want to try anything with that. Well, I, I understand. You uh, know, it, it, yeah. it, it it's uh, what do you do? You know, if the guys hit the ground with your airplane, you know, you you loaned it to them. You know, what are you going to say? I don't know. Yeah. Um, um, this uh, this is not the same airplane that, that uh, won the concourse at the NAT. So it looks at the pictures pretty carefully. I and mean, this is slightly different than the... Yeah, Ka I, Kaz has a few of those. Yeah. What, and, uh, I, met him in, I met him in Ohio thing? about 25 years ago, and he had that same airplane. But I know darn well it wasn't the same one. <laughs> yeah, one uh, one thing that happened was that uh, the screws that held the wing on kept coming loose, and Kenny didn't want to put Loctite on Kaz's airplane and spoil it, so he just kept retightening it every flight. And during one flight, I think got some pretty severe dihedral. The wing was coming off Ooh. both directions. And he did a good flight. Uh, we were really afraid that the wing would fall off. Oh, no. That would be awful. That would be disastrous. <laughs> after, after that, and I reported it uh, on the stunt hangar, uh, Kaz wrote in and said, tell Kenny to use luck time. <laughs> <laughs> next picture, we uh, got a Chinese guy. Next picture is, uh, yeah, 37, Yang Jun. Uh, He's the guy who flew the four-stroke. You can see his uh, one glove. He gets that from either Michael Jackson or uh, or uh, Han, the Chinese guy who won five world championships. I don't know why he wasn't there, but the, these guys seem to be more fun than the usual Chinese team. Two of them had uh, electric airplanes with lights on the side, so I showed them a light on the side of my airplane. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, picture number 38 is uh, the Italian team manager critiquing somebody's overhead eight. Yeah, it doesn't look like an eight. looks like a triangle. <laughs> uh, he's uh, the cross. Uh, is the, uh, yeah. Issue there. <laughs> um, picture 39 was they were posting um, scorecards for everybody with the numbers that all the judges put down for all the maneuvers and 
that was interesting. But it was especially good because when you went to, you got your your score sheets that the judges marked up. But instead of having to add them up and multiply them by the uh, K factors, uh, you can assume the computer did it right and look to see what numbers the judges wrote down. Compare that to the uh, the scorecard, and it, it's an easier way to check your score so I was impressed by this and uh, I may uh, include it in our team trials program well picture number 40 is the champ uh, that's his wife on the right and the wife the guy who builds my airplanes on the left mm-hmm. um, his airplane all covered with bugs the 41 um, I took that picture to show the boundary layer trip strips, turbulators, people call them, uh, the little uh, zigzaggy tape uh, pieces, about 20% cord on the wing. I don't see and it. We're looking at the, uh, the we're looking at Igor's wing now, SUV 11. Yeah. I don't picture see it. 41. Um, and yeah, the the trip strip is just behind the the back of the blue section uh, inboard and just behind the yellow section outboard. Mm-hmm. Gonna have to. Uh, oh, I see it. Yeah, pinking tape. Yeah, um, and now that I see where it is, I can do some analysis and figure out what it's for. <laughs> I don't know what he, what he uses it for. Um, the next picture, uh, 42, you can see uh, see it on a Czech airplane. There's straight lines on this mm-hmm. um, airplane. This airplane was 007. Uh, Russell Bond from Australia thought that that was by rights his number, and he didn't like uh, he didn't like other people using it. He's a, a very amusing fellow. We had a great time with him. Go ahead, Howard. Over the next uh, picture, number forty-three. That's uh, uh, Richard Cordenmeyer's airplane. He won the uh, twenty ten World Championships and uh, flew a Tom Lay Super Tiger 60, and he, he's gone electric, but he flew this, uh, he sa- uh, it says on his wing, in memory of my friend Tom Lay, with his Super Tiger 60. How did he do? It said Marshall. I, I asked him, what does that mean? And uh, it's the name of a Slovak uh, rock and roll band that uh, um, Tucks. I forgot his name. Marshall Tucker. <laughs> no, no. Uh, um, Alex Shrek uh, was listening to when he built the airplane. And picture 44, here's uh, Richie at the banquet with the Rushes. He, he wears white to fly stunt, like a stunt fire should, and he dresses in a suit for the banquet. He has a lot of class. And uh, he even posed with us, which I thought was. Uh, well, there went the class. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> there, well, it shows through. You know? <laughs> um, the banquet was pretty nice. I I enjoyed it. Uh, Igor didn't show up for us. At least by the time we got there, he wasn't there. And uh, so that's. I uh, see Igor. If you're listening to this, I was going to pay you your money for the prop at the banquet. I had it at the banquet, but you weren't there, so. I'm that's why I didn't pay you for the prop. So, onward to uh, to a tour of Poland after the after the World Championship. Um, number forty five is this is in the town which I really can't pronounce, Blaslavic, uh the town which the World Championships was. These are Soviet style apartment buildings. I like the numbers on them. That's that's, That's Stalag pretty, 26. <laughs> yeah, pretty pretty cool. Uh, 
but uh, they've advanced since then. For example, uh, picture number 46 uh, is a typical rest stop at uh, on the Polish freeway, speed limit 86 miles an hour. Um, granite picnic tables, a playground for the kids, uh, working restrooms, showers for truckers and folks who want to take a shower. Uh, McDonald's had a lot of them. One of them had a Burger King. So it must be nice to live in a rich country that can have freeway rest stops like this, unlike Indiana, which hmm. can't even... Yeah, the, the restrooms there. don't even work at the rest stops. Yeah, they, they closed the ones that they had and couldn't, couldn't afford them. Um, number 47, picture number 47 is a Mustang race. We didn't go to the Mustang race, but it was cool to see a poster for a Mustang race. Um, picture 48 is uh, some kind of a prenuptial prenuptial ritual in uh, this was in Copernicus's hometown Tarun this uh, lady is wearing rollerblades with pop cans tied on behind I don't know <laughs> what this is all about she must be the bride uh, she has the veil I, th I think that's the bride to be picture 49 is uh, Nicola Copernicus who uh, figured out that the, it's easier to think about the solar system is with the Earth going around the Sun rather than the Sun and everything else going around the Earth, which is kind of like uh, density altitude for doing calculations. Uh, he, he would have wept at the thought of density altitude. He's, he's a big Polish hero. There are a few of them, uh, like Pope John Paul II. He's a big deal in Poland. All the main drags of all the towns that we saw were named after John Paul II. Yeah, here in this Marie country, Curie. every every drive is Martin Luther King. <laughs> yeah, uh, Frederick Chopin is is big deal. There's a big statue of him in the park. The airport's named after him. Wow. This picture of uh, Copernicus you can see in the foreground. The kid there uh, has the requisite American T-shirt on. It says S F Calif for San Francisco, California, I presume. Um, picture fifty. Is a, a poster we saw in Warsaw for a museum in Krakow, which is interesting to see a lady with sterling Polish fighter wings. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, so we missed the boat by not going to Krakow. So if you go to Poland, go to Krakow. There's an airplane museum there that's uh, very cool, I've heard. And uh, it it didn't get as messed up in World War II as a lot of places. Uh, didn't they have? Don't they have a in Krakow? Don't they have a um, uh, 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 Holocaust memorial as well? The, there's a Holocaust memorial. Well, the, the Auschwitz was there, and it's sort of a Holocaust memorial. I didn't want to go there. There's a Holocaust memorial in uh, Warsaw. Right. We didn't. We didn't go to that either. We didn't know where it was um, number 51 is uh, Herbert Hoover Square <laughs> that's Herberta yeah it's <laughs> the same guy they can't spell very well <laughs> um, number 52 uh, this is the 70th anniversary of the Warsaw Uprising and this was a a big deal of stuff all over town, and it was it was interesting to read about these guys. Uh, they didn't give up; they didn't surrender. Um, and uh, the Soviets, who were invading and driving the Germans off, uh, stopped to let the Germans destroy Warsaw. And uh, these guys really had a hard time. 20th century was hard on Poland. I think all of history was hard on Poland. Um, yeah, the across the street from the Uprising Memorial, we saw this church with a propeller in front, so we had to go investigate. And uh, this is the Polish 
military cathedral. And we went in and heard a splendid organ concert. And uh, the last picture um, was on the front of, is a thing on the front of the cathedral uh, that shows Monte Cassino, 1944. And uh, excuse my ignorance, but who is Monte Cassino? Monte Cassino is the it was this uh, mountain in Italy with a um, a monastery on top, or some kind of a religious thing. And the Germans had occupied this, and it was holding up the Allies who were advancing north through Italy, and. The Americans bombed the Dickens out of it and destroyed the uh, abbey or whatever was on top, which just gave the Germans a better place to hide. And uh, then uh, the Gurkhas attempted to take the mountain. They failed. A bunch of other people couldn't do it, and the Poles finally took it. And then so, we we got David this, this David Fitzgerald. Big deal now. in Polish history, and uh, yeah. there's a family connection there because my dad was uh, participating in the project at the time, and uh, since then he always had uh, great respect for Poles and Polish soldiers, and he didn't think Polish jokes were funny. Next picture, so, we got Dave Fitzgerald. That's, that's it. You're back to the back to the beginning. That's that's uh, the end of my uh, World Champs report and uh, and uh, trip and uh, Polish tourism report. Well, I thank you for coming on and and uh, sharing your trip with us uh, to Poland. Um, can you give us a little insight insight on what your program is now? What what are you doing now to you know, up your game for this year's Nats. Up my game. Well, been out mm-hmm. flying some stun. Um, been flying uh, the old airplane, so <laughs> kind of saving the new one for a special occasion. I, I haven't haven't built another airplane. I uh, I had a backlog of household chores to do after the World Championships. So I'm going to fly the. When I flew in Poland at the Nats, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, I'm gonna try Igor's prop on it. Now, Igor's props; those are hollow, aren't they? They're they're hollow. Yeah, I still I've been trying to figure out how that's done, but I can't figure it out. Well, me neither. I presume they're molded in two halves and then glued together, but. Boy, that's dangerous. <laughs> invisible. They're, they look perfect. Yeah, well, all them guys from all those countries do super good work. <clears throat> I, yeah. I look at his. I looked at uh, Igor's airplane. On a nat scale, what would you give it? How many points? <laughs> With the bugs or without the bugs? If you took the bugs off, uh, seventeen or so. Mm-hmm. So that's it's respect, respectable. Yeah, it's a nice looking airplane. Oh yeah, the uh, GB or whatever the heck that is. This graphics design. I think Tanya participated in the artistic part of it. So now we don't know whether the uh, turbulators follow the 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 trim line or the trim line follows the turbulators. We don't know which came first. Well, speaking of turbulators, <clears throat> you really have a lot of faith in those. Uh, do they seem to be doing the job for you? Uh, well, I haven't tried the turbulators. I've been using vortex generators. That's it, vor- vortex generator. Yeah. Um, well, on on this airplane, I didn't do any experimenting. I just put them in the same place that were on the the white airplane. This airplane. I'm looking at it. You're not looking at it. That number 15 picture of the yellow airplane. Um, 
on the white airplane, I experimented quite a bit with counter rotating and co rotating vortex generators and uh, putting them where PJ says to put them uh, works pretty well. And I added two more pairs, and I thought I could perceive an improvement on each pair I added per side, top and bottom. Um, and where I notice them is coming out of corners. It uh, just seems to come out of corners and coming down and pulling out level. It feels better going around the corner. I have, have not tried. I have not tried those. What does a set cost? Well, let's see. Uh, it's dollar a pair, as I recall. And I'm out of them now. The <laughs> the, the lady who was printing them for me. Um, got a got a better job at Boeing. She she's in charge of the building the seven 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 wing, the new seven 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 wing. So she's too busy to mess with me. <laughs> so I, I hope to hope to get a hold of her, get get some new vortex generators and uh, new spinners, or even uh, buy her three D printer. <laughs> Yeah, um, I don't know. I'll try them. If, uh, I, if I can get a pair, I'll try them. But, you know, I don't know whether I'm good enough to even notice the difference. And, and in my Well, it don't make much difference, I don't think. Um, Paul Walker um, said they helped his new airplane a lot. Um, he has a Bob Hunt wing. A, a foam wing, so it it doesn't have the bumpiness of the um, ribs. So uh, uh, it, it seemed to have more of an effect on that than otherwise. He said cleaned up a bunch of stuff. They they might make an airplane a little more predictable. They don't. The effect is pretty subtle. I and watched. I watch. Uh, In my case, it may be all psychological, but I watch Chris Rudd's uh, experiment. You know, with the camera and the yeah, and the little tufts and all that. I didn't see much difference myself, but I don't. No, know. you you can see some difference on a triangle. Um, it would be nice to see what happens over the flaps. Whether they help prevent separation over the flaps. Um, well. Paul and David Fitzgerald both use them on the tails of their airplanes. I, I had them on and off the tail a few times and couldn't tell any difference there. I'm hoping next week to have uh, Frank Williams on, and he's going to show us some... Uh, he's built some kind of wind tunnel in his garage. Oh, yeah. And uh, I'm hoping to see some of the uh, you know, the wind tunnel tests on these airplanes. And he also has an engine dyno that he's going to uh, demonstrate. So I'm kind of anxious to see what's going on with that, but... Yeah, he's he's done some real science. He, uh, you know, as far as taking a piece of toilet paper and taping it onto the wing and flying around <laughs> with a camera on it, I, I don't know. It, it's kind of like oh, that's that, that's that's good. That's it's kind of like porting. When when I was at Harley Davidson, Woodman Harley Davidson, uh, one of the guys said, "Well, I'm gonna put this on a flow bench." I said, "Okay, what, what are you gonna use for a flow bench?" He said, "The vacuum cleaner and the toilet paper roll." I said, oh. "Okay, right." <laughs> Not. No, no. There's, uh, there's, yeah, Frank knows what he's doing, though. It's, it's <laughs> oh, I, I know. He's, uh, I, I, he's I, a I, building res- control engineer. I, I, uh, I respect his opinion on tuning and, and because he does understand how a tune pipe works, you know, it works off sound and, and pressure. It's not like what most people think. And, and it comes, and it, they're all the same. Motorcycle uh, expansion chambers, model air, it's all the same. So I don't know how they work, and I've lost interest. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. Now with the electrics, you know, but <clears throat> yeah. Bob Hunt says, you know, he doesn't care what it's powered with. If it was powered with a chipmunk or nuclear or wind or whatever, as long as it gets around, it's all right. Whatever makes you happy. Yeah. Um, I, I, this, this electric, uh, it's 
good way to fly stunt. I wouldn't use it for a classic or an old time airplane, but right, not right. But, uh, well, well, Howard, I thank you for being on the program. I'm going to spend the next two days editing this uh, footage, and hopefully, we'll get it up on Sunday, maybe Saturday well, this time. I don't know. I'm honored to. Uh, I'm honored to participate. Well, you're one of the good guys, you know. I'm good, like I said. I'm going to try to get. No, I'm not. Oh yeah. <laughs> You didn't. You didn't have any picture of your clown suit. That's a bummer. I was hoping to get that on there so I could put that on the the uh, the you know the opening page, the clown suit, so you and Sean could feel at home. Well, I'm not a professional clown, so. That, uh, Did you watch Sean's interview? No, I didn't. Oh, it's it's funny. <laughs> He's a funny character. Yeah, I'll bet. <laughs> All right, Howard. Thanks for uh, okay sp- speaking to us. Okay, thank you. Bye. Have a good evening. That was Howard Rush on Stunhanger and his um, trip to Poland. And uh, Howard's a good flyer, and, uh, you know, I've known him uh, probably 10 years, man, a little longer than that, 15 years, I guess. And uh, he's a real character. So, anyway, until next week. Tight lines, fair winds, be safe.